let's talk about autopilot. So I've been driving my Model 3 for the past couple of years and by now I've covered over 50,000 kilometers and most of those kilometers have been on a highway using autopilot. A couple years ago, Tesla only had two options when it came to autopilot. Either you could buy enhanced autopilot or you could purchase full self-driving. So when I was making that decision, it was pretty clear because at that time, Tesla had nothing going on for full self-driving, but they had a lot of features available if you opted for enhanced autopilot. So naturally, I went with enhanced autopilot mainly because I really wanted auto steer and I wanted automatic lane changes. In terms of capabilities, the basic autopilot is really what I wanted and over the past two years, it's really improved a lot. It's able to stay in the lane very easily. It's able to handle curves pretty nicely and it just works as expected. And it is one of my favorite things about the car, especially when I'm stuck in traffic. The other thing that Enhanced Autopilot provided is automatic lane changes. Basically, when your car is in autopilot and you're on the highway, if you want to change your lane, you don't have to press the brake or exit out of autopilot, change your lane, and then get back into autopilot. All you have to do is indicate which side you want to go, and autopilot will make sure that there is no car in front of you or behind you, and it'll do that lane change for you. And in my experience, it works amazingly well, but I did notice some issues when I was driving outside of Ontario. For example, when I drove to Saskatoon a couple months ago, I had a few instances when automatic lane change didn't work as I intended it to. And I think that's because there aren't a lot of Teslas in that area. And Tesla hasn't had enough data from that area to improve autopilot. The other thing my car came with is summon. In the beginning, you could summon your car only in a straight line. So for example, if you parked in a very tight spot, all you had to do was take your phone out, press the reverse button, and your car would come out. And same thing if you wanted to park your car, let's just say in a tight garage, you could get out of the car and then press forward and your car would enter the garage without any issues. Since I bought the car, Tesla rolled out an update and I was able to get Smart Summon. Now, to me, this is basically a party trick, but when it works, it is mind-blowing. So basically, you can summon your car to come to you or to a specific place in the parking lot through your phone. It has been getting better over the past year, but I don't think it still is to the point where I'm comfortable using it in public. So far, I've only used it as a demonstration. The issue that I have with this is, first of all, it is very slow to come to you. Second thing is, it doesn't really follow the rules when it comes to what side of the road it's gonna be on. Especially in full parking lots, it doesn't exactly know how to get to the destination. So in my opinion, it works pretty well as a proof of concept, but I don't think it's really feature ready and things are bound to go wrong at some point. So if you are planning on buying autopilot for Smart 7, I'd say please use it with caution because it's very much in beta right now. The next thing you get is auto park. So auto park can park two ways. One is it can reverse into a spot in a parking lot or if you're on the street and you want to do a parallel park, you can engage auto park to take care of that for you. Now, similar to Smart Summon, it is very slow. It doesn't behave like a normal person would, but it does the job. I personally don't use it primarily because of the speed. Also, in a lot of cases, it hasn't shown me the parking spot that I wanted to go for. So basically, all the time, I'm just parking the car on my own. After getting my car, the update that I was really excited to get was Navigate on Autopilot. So I've had the update for a year and a half now and it works pretty nicely in my opinion. So the way Navigate on Autopilot works is if you enter your destination in your car and you're driving in an area that is supported, your car can change lanes for you automatically. You can decide to disable that option if you want to, but it works pretty nicely on its own. The other thing it also does is once you are getting to the exit that you want to take, the car automatically takes it for you. The main issue I had with this feature up until last month was that it got into the passing lane a lot of times. But in the most recent update, Tesla has actually fixed that. So now you can actually choose a setting that lets you not drive in the passing lane for a long period of time. Now let's talk about what you get with full self-driving. A few months ago, Tesla rolled out new visualizations on the screen for cars with hardware 3.0 and full self-driving. And most recently, Tesla added the ability to stop 
at stop signs and recognize traffic lights and that feature is only available on full self-driving and hardware 3. So if your car is engaged in autopilot, it will automatically stop when it sees a stop sign or a traffic light. I'd say this is pretty handy for people who drive long distances on country roads with not a lot of traffic, but that's about it. This year, Tesla is also promising to roll out auto steer on city streets, but as of October, it's not here yet. So should you buy full self-driving or not? I'd say if you have the option to buy enhanced autopilot, I think that's a way better deal because almost everything that you currently get with full self-driving is available in enhanced autopilot for half the price. The only thing you don't get with enhanced autopilot is the ability to stop for stop signs or traffic lights. Apart from that, everything that you get with full self-driving is included in enhanced autopilot. But the one thing to keep in mind is auto steer comes with every new car now. And in my opinion, this is the most polished and essential feature of autopilot. So unless you really need summon, which can be a bit wonky as I mentioned before, or if you need the ability to take exits by using navigate and autopilot, I don't really think that you should be going for full self-driving. If you are able to get enhanced autopilot, yeah, go for it. But full self-driving, maybe wait until Tesla rolls out more features and see for yourself. Also, one more thing to keep in mind is that the autopilot that you purchase is only for the car and not the driver. So if you're only keeping your car for a couple years and then you sell it, your full self-driving package will be gone with the car. And for your next car, you'll have to repurchase autopilot all over again. Thank you guys for watching this video. Please subscribe for more Tesla and technology content. I really appreciate it.